My name is Henry Holsworth, investigator into the things beyond the grave. I sit by this campfire late at night. The crew of the Whitby are all around me snoring. It seems so lonely here and it's hard to believe that a scant few miles away a war is going on. This is my watch. I have it until two bells past midnight. Wait a second. Marine Clover is over there. I can see the smoke from his pipe. What's that? Red eyes. Red eyes in the darkness. Red eyes in the darkness coming towards us. This is a hunt, my friends. A troll hunt. Hello, my friends. My name is Owen. Welcome to another playthrough for the Silver Bayonet. One afternoon is going to be for Henry Holdsworth and the crew of the Whitby as we play The Troll Hunt, a scenario here from the uh, Silver Bayonet book. It's going to be fun, it's going to be full of action adventure full of goblins, maybe a troll, and um, the crew of the Whitby are sure going to have their work cut out. Thank you very much for joining me. Let's get on the board and get the dice rolling. Take care. Hello everyone and welcome to this playthrough of the Troll Hunts from the, uh, from the book, the Silver Bean of Rule book, with the crew of the Whitby, intrepid supernatural investigator Henry Holdsworth and me, their guide for today, Owen Staten. I hope you've watched the introduction and enjoyed it and let me just explain a few things on the board before I get started. Okay, um, this is the Troll Hunts. Excuse the rain. This has been played in a 21st century conservatory with a rather rickety roof. In reality, it's a horrible night in Napoleonic Spain and the rain is hammering down. But the crew of the Whitby are hardy men. And here they are, sleeping around a campfire. I've randomly determined that two of them are on guard at this very moment and they are Henry Holdsworth, a hero himself, and Rifleman Holt, who are um, uh, the Rifleman who's with the crew of the Whitby. The rest here, including the uh, midshipman, uh, holds, uh, midshipman um, is, is Mansfield is there, a lot of Marine Swanson, Swooping Hawk, they're all here and fast asleep. What we don't know, or what they don't know, is that all around them are goblins creeping into the camp area there's two over there you might see them there's one up here and there's one here there are four around the campfire there are four clue markers one two three four which we are, can hopefully investigate at some point and we have about six turns to get off the board at the end of every turn i'm going to draw a card i randomly put them here and that will bring us a random encounter to to deal with as well as you know, probably from watching these videos, uh, Silver Bayonet uses D10s, two D10s are rolled. The red dice symbolizes power, the blue dice symbolizes skill. So when you do an attack, you have to beat the, um, the, the target number, if you like, set by the defense of your enemy. And then if you're using a hand weapon, for example, it does the power damage. Whereas if you're using a, um, a foil, a fencing foil, or a pistol, it might use the skill. Uh, dice there as well so it's a little bit different but good I have in my pool a, uh, a spare power dice and a spare skill dice as we can see at the top which I can use at some point during the game to supplement a bad roll so um, that's be it the way the turn works is um, we start off I can move half my uh, my crew so I have one two three four five six seven so we round that down to three so I can move three then um, the goblins get to move and then I move the other half. Unfortunately, five of my crew are fast asleep and they need a target number of 16 to wake up, plus one for every turn that we're into the game. So hey, enough, enough of me. Let's get going and let's find out exactly what's going to happen here. Holdsworth has just sort of woken up and he hears something just beyond, uh, beyond the borders of sight, if you like. He's really quite nervous about it and it seems all of a sudden he sees glowing red eyes coming out of the dark so i'm going to go with holdsworth first of all holdsworth calls to the crew of the whitby to wake calls to them that something is on its way and he's not going to move he's going to stay exactly where he is 
and using his brace of pistols, he's going to fire at this goblin straight ahead that he can see coming through the mist. Now, the goblins have a unique skill about them, and that is that within six inches, in fact, he's going to move because he's outside six inches, it's a bit, a bit of a cheek by myself, if I'm within six inches of a goblin, they have a, uh, an ability that destroys technology that doesn't allow me to fire. So I'm going to take the minus one to move just outside. He is a supernatural investigator. He knows that the... And we've come across goblins in our uh, adventures in the past, so he knows that this sort of thing happens. Fires his first gun. He brings it out. Bang! Off it goes. He scores a seven. His... Um, I add his ballistic skill, his accuracy, as was the game here, which is plus one, which is an eight. So the fires off and just hits one of the trees over there. Second shot, he fires. It's a 10, 11, and his skill, his accuracy is plus uh, one, so that's only a 12. Now the goblins have got defense of 15, which is really, really high, so they're actually really hard to hit. So Holdsworth actually misses on, um, on both occasions there. Uh, the goblins, okay, with a defence of 15. He misses them. So his cries are, uh, well, nothing really. Rifleman Holt, the same. He's outside of six inches. Now he's a dead eye, and he sees that the, um, this goblin is approaching from this side of the board. So he is going, there's some smoke there, because Holdsworth has fired. He's going to raise his rifle to his eye and fire. I say he's a dead eye. He scored a 10, and um, his... Accuracy, I believe, is plus two, so it's only a 12. So bang, bang, bang! These go out. Now the crew, still fast asleep. Okay, the goblins, I've got a move. Let's have a look. Uh, I'm just going to keep flicking back and forth a little bit, my friend, so please stick with me. Goblins have got speed of six. This goblin rushes forward. Now, not only does he approach Holt, he now stops him from being able to use his gun, which is horrible. This goblin... Using the runes in the um, in the Silver Bayonet book will always approach the nearest hero. So these guys are all moving forward to attack uh, our heroes. So that's their move. So that's quite a, um, a horrible move. Now, let's see if Holdsworth and Holt's cries have actually awoken any of the crew. Let's try Marine Swanson. No, he only rolls a five. Plus one is six. He's still fast asleep. Ooh, Mansfield, the midshipman. Now, I think he would awake. He's got an animalistic presence at the moment, if you've been following the, uh, the story. But no, he stays asleep. Sailor there, 11. No, he's still asleep. Other sailor, awake. He is the quartermaster. Caused chaos on our last mission, who, uh, with his um, uh, the, the guns, didn't work very much. So he wakes up, but he does have two fatigue points about him. So just for this turn. So that's something we're going to remember. Let's try Swooping Hawk before we finish. And he awakens as well. Again with two fatigue points. Now they've got one action. It takes one action to wake. So um, they've got a movement action. So what are they going to do? Okay. Swooping Hawk actually is going to move it in this direction away from the campfire, into the shadows and the darkness, with maybe a view to going down here to investigate this, uh, this little uh, uh, thing down here. Our friend here is going to do the same thing. That he's going to move in that direction, spreading out away from the campfire. The worst thing you can do is be seen around the shadows of the, of the flickering flames. And the crew of the Whitby are experienced enough to know that they must get into that darkness and stay away. Hmm. Okay, now that is the end of the first turn, my friends. So what we do, uh, there's some special rules here that the, uh, the turns. At the end of turn one, place another goblin on the table at a centre point of a random table wedge. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Roll again, nine or ten. One, two. So, oh, swooping hawk thinks he's being safe by leading in this direction. But another goblin enters here. Hmm, that's put things up in the air a bit, isn't it? Okay, it's turn two. Right, I have half my crew to move. Now, Holdsworth is in a pickle because he needs to reload and he needs to fire again, but he's too close. So I think, where is he going to be more than six inches? He's not going to be more than six inches away from any sort of um, 
goblin there, isn't he? So what he's going to do, he's actually going to run. Okay, he's going to run um, this way into this forested area. So he rolls 1d10. Uh, sorry, 2. 17, so that's really good. He gets to run 10 inches. That's his base movement, plus another 4 inches. So that takes him well into here. I'll put him down at 8 inches, just because of the um, of the rough ground of the forest when he, uh, when he actually makes his break in the, into the woods. So he darts for the forest, diving for cover. Okay, that's the first one. Now we've got Swooping Hawk, and we've got Holt, who are both awake here, and I've got... Um, the quartermaster as well. So what's he going to do? He's within six inches, isn't he? But he hasn't fired. So he's going to take a move just back to the edge of the woods. Just get him outside of those that sort of area where the goblins are going to be. Yeah. Okay. And he's going to take a pop at this goblin here with his musket. He's going to fire. He's at minus one because of his movement. But off he goes and bang! Um, he scores a 12 plus... One for his accuracy is 13. It's nowhere near enough again. These goblins are horrible. All right. Um, so we've got, we've moved two. We're going to go with Swooping Hawk. Swooping Hawk is a brave beyond compare. And he's going to charge into combat with this goblin and actually take him on with his hand weapons. Charges in. Here he goes. Oh, he scores an eight. Um, with his melee, a plus one is nine. There's nowhere near anything um, needed to hit the goblin. He's swinging his tomahawk axes around, but the goblin is ducking under them. We'll actually fight back. Goblin scores a 12 um, with his, let's have a look what his uh, melee is. I don't think it's that great, but it still could be uh, quite strong. Okay, goblin, 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 my friend. Hobgoblin, no, 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 we want goblin. Melee is plus naught. So no, he, he misses swooping hawk as well. So what are they going to do at this occasion? Right, both of them and fist. This goblin's going to disengage slightly there. Swooping Hawk was slightly disengaged there. And that's three of my men have now moved. So we go straight into the goblin's actions. We'll start with this one. This one's going to head into combat with Holt. There. Here he comes. He scores an eight. Uh, Holt's defense is 13. Or oh, Clover. I keep calling him Holt. He's Rifleman Clover. Surely you're probably shouting that out by now. Uh, Rifleman Clover is 13, so he ducks underneath the axe of the goblin and gets to hit back. Oh, only with a six. So nothing there from either of them. And both will disengage. Okay. Um, we'll go with this goblin here, who was fighting Swooping Hawk. He's going to rush in for another shot, actually. Here he comes. Ooh, a nine and a five. That's 14. Swooping Hawk's defense is 13. Ha! Okay, so um, that is going to be a hit, and he's hitting with power, which is nine points of damage, leaving Swooping Hawk on one hit point. That's a real blow. That's a real blow. Oh! Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to use this um, dice to see if I roll a 10, I can negate all the damage. Anything other than a 1, I can negate half of it. Negate. He's on two, and I've given my dice up for one hit point. I've tried to negate that bit of damage. So that leaves me, he's on two hit points. But he gets to hit back. Here he goes. Oh, he does well. He scores a 13, and his um, melee, his 14 is still not enough, and he's pushed back. Ah, these have gone. Okay, this goblin here is going to go towards the nearest hero and wakes him up. They automatically woken up. And he gets to fight at minus two um, because of his fatigue. So the goblin comes swinging in with his axe. Here he goes. Only oh, scores a five, though, thankfully. So that's quite low. Okay, Sailor goes fighting back. Oh, gosh, yeah, well done. Uh, that's 12. He doesn't get a plus three. He pluses minus two. So both of them disengage backwards. This puts him in the line of fire from this goblin that rushes out and attacks him as well. Oh gosh, this goes a 14, which is enough to hit him with a power dice. Hits him with six points of damage, which is a lot of damage. And that hurts my sailor friend there, really hurts him. Uh, sailor Martin, that is. He is in a bad way, but he gets to fight back anyway. So let's see what damage he can do. 16, now that's great. He's done well there with his hand weapon. 
Uh, he hits for a 17. Hits with power. Uh, unfortunately, the goblins have got this aversion to, um, or this uh, protection from iron weapons. So I take four off the damage I do to them. So it only hits him for two. So it's merely a flesh wound against the goblin, which is, again, unfortunate for us. But still, 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 still. The goblin has got, a, uh, has got six wounds left. So let's put him on a six there. I'll just get this exactly as best we can. Um, this goblin here is going to move six inches towards our sleeping friend there, Mansfield, and weakens Mansfield up with an attack. So he gets to fight Mansfield, but Mansfield fights back with his fatigue. So this is the goblin. Scores a ten. Not enough to hit Mansfield. Mansfield's going to fight back. A nineteen. Now that is a good hit from a midshipman who rises like a wolf in the moon and brings out his sword and stabs the goblin with it for five points of damage. Five points of damage. How on Mansfield? No. Five hit points on the goblin. So that leaves that goblin on um, three. So three wounds left. Okay. It's not bad. And pushes the goblin back. Push him back. Horrible ambush, isn't it? It's the end of turn two, so what happens now is a, another goblin uh, appears at a random table edge point. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, one, two, three, four. So, oh, swooping hawk has got another goblin to face. There are a pile of these goblins coming onto the board, which is really hard to deal with, but we've got to do it. That's why we're here in the Spanish Hills. Uh, to find out what's going on. Right. Henry Holdsworth. He's going to run. Uh, only an eight. But I think that's going to get him to this clue marker. Where he's going to stay. Okay, where he's going to stay. The quartermaster is going to reload his gun. Uh, he's within six inches. So that is not going to do a lot for him. So... He reload his gun and he move just a little bit into the woods that way. And Swooping Hawk, who's in a bad way, is going to attack this goblin here. He is courage unbound, man. a really, really courageous man. Rushes there with his tomahawks once again. Oh, he's got a 12. Still, no, I'm going to use this dice my skill dice to re-roll my skill dice because this could be a really good yes now he scores a 17 now that's enough uh, with his 18 his hand weapon uses power so he hits the goblin for 10 points of damage goblin negates four of that but still takes six hit points and gets pushed back so that's really brave of um of uh, uh swooping hawk but the goblin does fight him back with only a nine, so it doesn't get to hit him. So Swooping Hawk pushes him back away uh, from the campsite, just as our colleagues are trying to rise. Okay, the rest, uh, that's our first turn. The rest, uh, now is the Goblin turn. This one rushes back into combat with um, Mansfield. Okay, let's roll it. Let's do the Goblin first. It's a mere six. Mansfield ducks under the blow of his mace and comes back up knowing that this goblin is being hurt. But with only an eight. So neither of them do anything. So they're both there as such. And uh, Sailor Martin is in combat with that goblin. Goblin attacks him for eight. So that's not enough. He fights back against the goblin. Oh yes, a 10 and a four. Um, that's 14, plus1 for his melee, this 15's a hit on the goblin, and it's my old Middle Earth dice here from about 1985, which is actually, whap, a dagger through the heart for 10, which is amazing. Now the goblin had already taken um, 6, so this goblin, believe it or not, we've slain a goblin, which is a very rare event in this game. Sailor Martin shoots a goblin who goes down, where's my drink gone? Folks, we are. I hope you're all well, guys, as well. The, uh, the weather's starting to turn. Oh, I'm saying that, it's pouring down the rain, isn't it? I hope everyone's good, and I hope you're enjoying these videos.
I'm really enjoying making them. And whatever you're doing at this time, you know, I thank you for being with me here. It's, um, it's good to have your company. I hope this keeps you a little bit uh, uh, awake in these strange times. All right, now, he can't rest on his laurels. Oh, ah! Or can he? He can't rest on his laurels too long as out of the darkness this goblin sneaks out to attack him. Uh, it's a 9 and a 2, so it's 11. It's not enough to beat Martin's defence of 13. So he can spin around and fight this goblin now with a 13 point. But still, do you know what? Every dog has his day. I think this guy, I can hardly remember his name at the start, but look what he's doing here. Hits the goblin for a 9 and a 6 is 15, plus his score of uh, plus 1, 16, minus the fatigue, 15, it's enough. 9 points of damage, goblin negates 4 of that, so still hits the goblin for 5 hit points, and pushes him back. Ah, oh, Amazing, what absolute incredible feats he's doing. This goblin here rushes towards Clover. Clover tries to fire his gun as the goblin comes in, but click, it doesn't work because of the magic of the goblin. Uh, the goblin only scores a six, though. He had a bad round of the goblins, thankfully. And Clover fights back with a nine. So nothing from those two. They're both there uh, in the middle. And then down here, this goblin's really badly wounded. He rushes in against um, uh, Swooping Hawk. And scores a 12, which isn't enough to beat uh, Swooping Hawk's defence of 13. And now Swooping Hawk goes to hit him back. Come on, Swooping Hawk. 10, 11, it's not enough. But both of them back off. Now, Swooping Hawk is fatigued as this goblin rushes in to fight him as well. Now, this goblin scores a 6 and a 5, it's an 11. It's not enough. And Swooping Hawk fights backwards. Wow. A 9 and a 9 is an 18. What a brilliant hit from Swooping Hawk. Um, he's hit that goblin for nine points of damage, negates four, obviously. So that uh, goblin takes another five hit points. So we are, we are fighting back here, my friends. We are fighting back, which is good. Right, it's the rest of my uh, soldier's gang. Now, Marine Swanson, who usually does really well, is fast asleep. Let's see if we can wake him. No, he's still sleeping. Sleeping through all of this. Now, it's the turn of my remaining guys, which are um, going to be uh, Clover, Mansfield, and Martin, because he's gone, isn't he? So let's have a look what we can do. Mansfield, his blood is up now, and he rushes in to fight this god in front of him. He scores a nine, and a four is, four, is 13. But with his plus two melee, that hits him, yes, he scores a 15, nine points of damage on the goblin, who's already taken three. So uh, the goblin takes another five, that's eight. Another goblin falls to the ground, having been slain by Mansfield. That's amazing, actually. And now um, Holt, sorry, Clover, goes in against this one. He does well as well. Look at that. A 9 and an 8. 17 plus 1 for his melee. Bang! Hits the goblin for 9. Take away 4 is 5 points. So this goblin is hit back. This goblin ambush isn't quite going to their plan, is it? Which is good news. That, my friends, is the end of turn 2. So now it's turn 3. Now something else happens at the end of turn 3. If I turn to the scenario, which is in here, obviously. Uh, let me see. Wow. Okay. Solo play. Here we go. Enjoying these solo games. They're always really well done. All these Joseph Fame Colour games are really nicely balanced. And I really enjoy it. Okay. At the end of turns, I went to and flow. No. At the end of turn three, place a troll. Yes, you heard me right. A troll at the centre point of a random table edge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Troll. Swooping Hawk. My gosh, Swooping Hawk, have you got your work cut out? As a troll emerges out of the darkness. You can just about see him there, my friends. I am moving forward just so you can see this huge, hulking, troll like beast. 
come out of the dark to fight. Ouch. Okay. Right. It's turn three. What am I going to do? It's turn three. Right. He's Holdsworth seems safe over there, so I don't need to move him. I just want to investigate what's going on there. This goblin is a little bit vulnerable. He's taken um, five hit points. Okay, Swooping Hawk is in a bad way, isn't he? But that goblin is as well. Both those goblins are, actually. So what he's going to do, he's going to rush forward and fight. Cuts along his front. It's maybe called self-harm. It's actually a really good war chant, which he does. And he fights out. He only scores an eight, though. Which is not good enough. And the goblin comes back with a 13, which is enough to hit him. And... Um, does four points of damage on him. He's only on two. Swooping Hawk goes down, my friends, in the dark and hits the ground. Right. Let me see get rid of some of the messy dice. Ah, okay. Wasn't how I wanted to turn to start. Quartermaster is more than six inches away, so he's going to take a shot out of the darkness at this goblin here with his musket. I know he loaded. Yes, look at that. Now, this is a really good shot. He hits with a 14 plus one for his um, his rifle fire. There's a 15, bang, 10 points of damage on the goblin, minus four, but he still takes five points of damage, which is enough to put him down. Three goblins down already. That's really good news. And now we have one more that we can do, and that is going to be Mansfield. He's going to make a run. In fact, he's going to make a run. Let's roll. 19, 18, sorry, so he gets to go 10 inches. That takes it all the way up to this clue marker and out of the way of um, a lot of what's going on here. So we've gone one, we've gone two, we've gone three. That's all I've got to, to go. It's now time for the bad guys to move. Let's start here. This goblin here goes in against uh, Clover. Clover again raises his gun, but he's forced to fight him with the back of his rifle. Here comes the goblin. Only scores a seven, which is low and not enough which is good news. Clover comes back with a five. It's even worse. It's a bit of a battle for the ages going on there, isn't it? So uh, both of them are stuck there. Okay, who else is on the board? We've got the two goblins and the newly arrived troll. Ah, troll. I don't really want to fight the troll. I can help it. But I might have to. It's got a speed of five, which is not amazing. But it's going to try and run towards the nearest hero. So the troll moves up to this way and is going to be followed by the two goblins. That one on a five, isn't it? And this one on a six. They're both badly wounded, these goblins. But they're still around. Wake up, Swanson. Okay. Uh, guys I've got left. Let's try and see if we're Swanson will wake up. He does. He wakes up. Oh. Out of the darkness looms the troll. Yeah. Swanson, what's he going to do? Oh, he's within six inches. We can't fire at the goblins. This is a blow. What he's actually going to do is he's going to back up. He's got two fatigue as well at the moment, so he's going to back up this way, following the calls of, um, uh, of Mansfield there. Hmm. Okay. We'll go with um, Martin. Sailor Martin has had a brilliant game. He's still got a, uh, his gun. He hasn't fired it. He's taken six wounds. So what he's going to do, he's within six inches of me. So he's going to move just a little bit, giving him a minus one up here. But just in the flickering, flickering flames of the darkness, you can see this goblin here. So he's going to take a shot at him. Oh, okay. 14. What a game he's having. 14, plus his accuracy of plus one, is 15. Hits the goblin for nine points of damage. Minus four. Goblin goes down. Four goblins down. The harvest men are really feeling the brunt and the, the hard end of the clue of the Whitby here. Okay. Um, it's fired. He's gone. Now that frees up. No, it doesn't. He's still within six, isn't it? But he can move. He can move backwards and take a pop at the uh, this goblin coming up here. 
not good though. Um, the last couple of games is is the shots have deserted him a bit, and he's got the jitters, hasn't he? Oh no, it's um, Swanson. But yeah, the man with the jitters was sleeping soundly throughout it all. And that is the end of well, no, it's the end of turn three, turn four. Sorry, I didn't turn it right. So um, at the end of turn four, a another goblin at the table point. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, Holdsworth. Holdsworth. Look who's just appeared behind you. Ouch. Right. I think Holdsworth had better move than me. With his first uh, action, he's going to investigate the, um, the clue marker in front of him. So I'll draw a random card. It's the Jack. The Jack says, a small gold ring. Add your choice of either one power dice or one skill dice, excuse me, to your fate pool. That's good. I'm going to add a power dice to my fate pool. And on the back of that... No. No, he's fired, isn't he? He's going to move this way. Ah. He's going to move a little bit here, away. My second uh, action is going to be... Uh, Mansfield, who's going to investigate. No, it's not. That would be a silly move because he's quite safe, isn't he? Right. Swanson, you're more than six inches away. You're going to take a pop at uh, this goblin in the red here. Three. He really is bad at the moment. And that leaves him with a smoke as well. Boom. And Swanson, come on, redeem yourself. And show where. Uh, it's not Swanson there. Clover. Redeem yourself. Reloads and fires again at that red goblin. 15 plus 2 accuracy is 17, which is good. And it's a rifle, so it fires on uh, on skill. So that's that would be a 10. Um, of course, the goblin negates 4 of that, but the goblin goes down, which is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant for us. Okay, so I've done those three guys now, and now it's the turn of the of the monsters. Out of the darkness, this one charges at Holdsworth. Ah! Who jumps with fright as this cadaverous creature looms out after him. Only scores a seven though, which isn't too bad. And now Holdsworth spins around to fight and hits him for a f uh, eleven, which isn't isn't enough. Both of them back off. The troll. Who's he closest to? Sailor Martin. Who's five inches in the direction of Sailor Martin. You can see the crew of the, uh, the Whitby have got their works cut out here. And this goblin here, the wounded goblin, starts making his way towards Clover. It's the rest of the guy's... Um, job now okay so we've got martin we've got quartermaster and we've got mansfield mansfield investigates that clue marker up there so he gets the king and the king uh, is ideal firewood all the investigating figures melee attacks count as fire for the rest of the game now that is brilliant when you're fighting trolls believe me so, Mansfield, you might have a little bit of work cut out there. So what he's going to do is just move a little bit away from that with his second action. Good stuff. Right. Sailor Martin brings up his gun and fires at the troll. What a game that man is having. He scores a 16. Boom. Plus one is 17. What's the troll's defence? Let's have a look what the troll does. So defensive 13, um, allergy to fire, damage reduction 4. But hey, he scores, look at that, he scores, um, hits the troll for 9. So um, take away 4, the troll has been hit for 5 points of damage, which is great, really good. The troll's got 20 wounds, <laughs> which is uh, which is horrible. But he's hit, he's taken 5. So bang, he gets hit my shoulder with a musket from one of the crew there. But he's got an allergy to fire as well. Now, what will that do if we get uh, Mansfield into combat with him? It's all an allergy to... Uh, okay. 
Right. Okay, so uh, he can just attack the troll without having to uh, take away the damage, which is really good. But the troll is obviously a mighty, mighty opponent. Okay, both of those are gone. Mansfield has done that. Um, Martin has done another great shot out of the darkness. And the quartermaster will take a shot at the troll as well from the trees. Oh, I dropped my dice. Let's see. No, it's not great. It's a nine. Bang! A shot rings out, but doesn't go anywhere near uh, the hit of the troll and just shoots off into the darkness. Yikes. Yowzers. Okay. Um, and that, my friends, is going to be the end of turn four, I think. What we can see is a bit of a rear guard action falling here, can we? But if I just go back to the scenario, let me just see if any more beasties are going to join us. Um, here we four. Yeah, it is turn four. We have another goblin joining us, which is probably what the harvest men need at this point in time. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. We've got a goblin over here. So out of the darkness comes another goblin onto the board itself. Right. Okay. It's our turn. We investigated that one. We investigated that one. Holdsworth. Because what he is, is an investigator at the end of the day, cries out to the quartermaster, cover me and cover this goblin. So he doesn't talk about it, he's cover me and cover this goblin. And using his skills, getting more than 11, or 11 or over, he runs 10 inches in the direction of this investigative market. He could isolate himself here with the rest of the crew slowly retreating. Okay. Right, oh, I've blown. Martin, because you're on a roll, which is so good, I'm going to ask you to reload and fire again at the approaching troll. But that will end somewhere, isn't it? He scores a nine. So that's one, two, three, that's all of us. So now it's the uh, the bad, bad guy's turns. This one comes onto the board, making his way towards the, uh, the crew that way. This one goes into combat with uh, Clover. The Goblin scores a 10. His defence is 13 for Clover, so it's not enough to hit him. And Clover's going to hit him back with an 8, which isn't enough. So both these discharge a little bit there. Now here's the interesting one. The Troll comes in against Martin. Oh dear. That's going to be a, um, a great uh, attack here by the Troll. The Troll has got a, um, a melee of plus 3. So he's coming in strong, but he only rolls a five. So that's tremendous news for Sailor Martin, who comes back with an eight. So both of them will discharge, disengage, sorry, away there. Okay, and uh, this goblin here is going to approach, in fact, he's going to charge the quartermaster, who has got a bit of work cut out now. Here he goes. Oh no, he scores a 15, which beats the Quartermaster, and Power Dice is a 9. Quartermaster has got 10 wounds, he takes 9, staggering back as the Goblin hits him with his giant axe right in the face. He staggers back, not knowing what to do, but well, he does know what to do, and that's fight back. No surrender, the victory crew. 9, 11, it's not enough for you. Beaten back into the trees by the set by the uh, the goblin. Okay, it's the rest of the crew. Right. Swanson, reload and fire at the goblin right in front of us. What a shot! A nine and an eight. Um, so that would be a seventeen plus two is nineteen. Uh, it's a dead eye shot. It's a rifle skill based shot, which is eight. Take away four. Goblin's already taken five. Goblin is down. Brilliant stuff. Crew of Whitby doing ourselves proud here. Uh, and that leaves um, Sailor Martin's gone, isn't he? Mansfield. Mansfield with his burning braid charges with his sword at. The, uh, the advancing troll. A wild look in his eyes. 
Here he comes. <laughs> he scores 11. His, um, his skill is plus 2, though. His melee skill is plus 2. So that gives him a score of uh, 13, which is the troll's defence. He's not as high as the goblins. Now, he has hit with a sword, which is a hand weapon, so it's power-based. So he actually hits the troll for four points of damage. The troll is on nine, which is, which is okay. Um, the troll, well, he staggers it back, the flame burning into the flesh of the troll. The troll gets to fight back, but he only gets a six. So Mansfield is victorious and pushes the troll back. Good stuff, Mansfield. I like that. I really like it. All right, okay. Um, I think that's everybody gone there, isn't it? So we go to the next turn. So turn fight. I don't think anything comes on now this turn. So we're this is it. We're in the battle. This is the war. This is the combat. If you really enjoy this, guys, um, go to coffee.com and... and buy your coffee if you get a chance I uh, would really appreciate that and just leave me a little message I always get back to everybody um, it helps me get more hobby stuff and helps me to devote a bit more time to this which I really enjoy doing I hope that you you guys are enjoying it mm. I also have a storytelling page um, time between time storytelling I put a story up every week it's old myths old legends those type of things so you might really enjoy that and I also do a podcast called time between times podcasting so if any of those things interest you, jump in there, my friends. I'd love to see you there. Okay, uh, it's our turn. Mansfield, uh, Holdsworth investigates. Holdsworth investigates. Could be a TV series, could it? The Queen. He scores against the Queen. So what does that mean for our adventurers? Let's have a look. Troll Hunt, um, the Queen. Bag of Iron Nails. All the investigating figures shoot as atta shooting attacks count as cold iron for the rest of the game. So he can now shoot the goblins without penalty, which is really good. He reloads anyway as, as his second action. So he looks back and he can see other things going on here. Now we've investigated three of the markers, haven't we? Um, I'm going to go with Sailor Martin, Man of the Match Martin, who reloads and fires at the troll who's right in front of him. You know what? Look at him. What a guy. <laughs> he, he scores a 16, a 17. Um, it's a power base shock, it's a musket. And um, the troll doesn't take full damage, it's fall off. He takes another three, so that puts him up to 12 points of damage. So we could actually take this troll down with a bit of luck. Uh, so we've gone with Holdsworth, we've gone with Squire Ma uh, Sailor Martin. And we're going to go with, how many have I got now? Because he's down his knees. One, two, three, four, five, six. We can go for one more. So we're going to go with Clover. Clover is also going to fire at the troll. Bang. What a shot. 16. Boom. Plus two is 18. Bang. He hits the troll. Uh, it's only six, so he only does um, two, but that puts the troll up to 14. So actually, that is nipping away at him, isn't it? Really striking him, peppering him with shot. Okay, uh, right, it's the bad guy's turns. This goblin, oh, look at that, he's left himself a bit vulnerable here. This goblin out of nowhere charges Clover, swings for him. Uh, with a five and a two, that's not enough to hit him. Clover, uh, ah, turns around and fights back. Uh, seven, so nothing, nothing there. And we've got uh, the troll is going in against Mansfield. Here he comes. Oh gosh, it's an 18. Now that's a big hit. That's a big, big hit. It's, it beats his defense. He does, uh, he's using his, his hand weapons, so that means he does 10 points on them. Uh, Mansfield, but he also has the strength skill and the strength uh, very strong. Let me just check what that does, my friends. Please have patience with me while I do that. Very strong, plus two damage. So he hits Mansfield, 12. Oh, 12, okay. He's got 14. So, yeah, got 14. I'm trying to see if I can heal him. 
three. He went for two, so that puts him on um, ten points of damage. Okay, so he's he's taking ten. Um, he's got four left, but what he has got is incredible courage. Testing on four two, whatever you want to call it, and a burning brand. So here he comes. Oh, he's done well. Boy, he has done well. He has done very well. He scores fifteen plus two for his own melee. Um, it's a six point damage, power damage against the troll who is not immune to fire, he's allergic to fire. The flaming brand burns the troll's flesh and the troll goes down. I didn't think I'd be saying those words when um, we uh, took this game up today. I really didn't. Here, the really badly injured quartermaster is in battle with the goblin over there. The goblin comes in for 16 points of damage. Wow. He goes down. He goes down. Right. Uh, the rest of my guys' turns. Holdsworth. Mansfield. Sorry, he's licking the blood off the, the end of his sword there. What an amazing turn you had. They're within six inches there, so he can't fire. Charge. Okay. Charge, charge, charge. 13. Uh, plus one, 14, not enough. Goblin fights him back. Eight. Okay. That's the end of that turn. It's turn six. Let me just double check that nobody else is due to come on and cause us any problems this late in the game. Right, let's have a look. Um, scenario five. Scenario. Oh, give me. I'm on standby. Oh, okay. No, nope, that's it. That's it. We are right. Next turn. Half a man go first. Holdsworth. Henry Holdsworth shouts a salute and leaves the table. Sailor Martin has done so well. 16, he does well on his run in. He leaves the table that way. Um, okay. Goblins. From out of nowhere, out he comes to fight against um, our friend here, Mansfield. Who's baking in triumph after killing the troll? He has got smoke on him. Uh, hits him with a nine. That's not enough. Mansfield spins around. He comes back with a four, so neither of them do anything. I hear this goblin goes in against Swanson. Hits him for 17. Ah, power based attacks at seven. Hits on Swanson. It's a big, he's got 10, but that's a big hit on him. Fights back against the goblin. Only an eight, so no, the goblin actually wins there. Uh, Clover goes in to fight the goblin. Oh, goes in, yeah, 14, 15 with his um, uh, melee skill and a nine. So he hits the goblin for five points of damage, which is great news. The goblin with the fatigue of one. Fails to do any damage against uh, our friend there. Right. Okay. What do we do now, my friends? What do we do now? Uh, it's turn seven. Mansfield calls to his crew to leave the burning flames behind. And runs off that way. I'll also, I'm going to go with uh, the very badly wounded Swanson. Ooh, ten inches. He's gone. Only Clover is left. Goblin comes in against him. Goblin scores an 11. It's not enough. Clover comes back at him. Only with a five, that's not enough. 
and this goblin's going to come in against him as well. This goes a 13. It's not, it is, it's enough. But only does three points on Clover, so Clover is hurt, but he's okay. He's okay. The worst thing for him now, he's been abandoned by all the crew of the Whitby. The man in green fights back. It's not enough. Okay, last turn. Clover, he doesn't get a big thing, but he flees up that way and leaves the table. And there we have it, my friends. Well, it wasn't bad, was it? We did okay. We investigated three out of four clue markers. We lost two crewmen, and um, we've killed quite a few uh, goblins here. Hang on a second. We've got one, two, three, and um, four goblins slain there. And we also have the troll slain, which is good. And we have two crewmen down. So let's find out exactly what happens at the end of that adventure. Thanks for joining me. I really enjoyed that. It was good. Okay, rewards. Plus one experience point if the unit, unit investigates three or more clue markers. Yes, we did. What? Plus one experience point if the unit kills three or more goblins. Yes, we did. Plus two experience points if the unit kills the troll. We did. Plus one experience point if at least two soldiers either exit the table or are left at the table at the end of the scenario. We did. Plus one experience point if at least four soldiers, uh, soldiers either exit or left on the table at the end. Cumulative, yes. Plus one experience point of at least six sailors. Five did, so we didn't get that. So we get one, two, three, four, five, six experience points for that adventure, which is absolutely fantastic. And um, we do get a to roll for two crew uh, men to see exactly what happened to them. And let's, fingers crossed, let's just hope that they're going to be fine so that we can um, uh, take them on to the next adventure. They are, uh, especially Swooping Hawk, is a, is a favourite of mine. He never seems to get much luck, but hey, he's there, isn't he? And um, he's always good to have around. Good character to have in the, um, uh, in, in with the crew of the Whitby. Always have trouble finding this in the book, so please stick with me, guys. We're almost there. Here we are, campaigns. Right then, let's have a look. And um, it's two dice, so we go first with the Quartermaster, who scores a, uh, oh, it's only one, uh, one dice, sorry. Quartermaster, seven is a flesh wound. He recovers to fight again. And Swooping Hawk, seven as well, a flesh wound. He recovers to fight again. The Troll Hunt, that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Thanks for joining me here on this wet Sunday afternoon. Um, I really hope you had a good time and um, stick with us, okay? Anything you want to um, watch, drop me an email at owenstaten at aol.com. Give me a follow on Twitter at Owen S. Griffiths. And of course, uh, consider the coffee. I would really appreciate it, as well as the storytelling channels. Deal my friends. Thank you ever so much. Take care.